What's up guys, it's Hedgehog Coasters, and today I will be doing my next video, which is which Six Flags Park has the best top roller coaster. It's by me, so let's get right into it. So basically, before we do start, I want to give a shout out to Tanner Pavetic. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, for helping me out. Uh, he helped me with Great America, um, for the Great America Park, because I've never been to Six Flags Great America, so I uh, needed to choose a coaster for that, and I didn't know what to choose, so he helped me out and gave me some reasons as well, so thank you. So basically the way this will work is I'll find the best, I'll, I took the best coaster from each Six Flags Park and I'll rank them all. So basically I'll see which p park has the best, like the top roller coaster, like the best number one coaster at the park. Um, Altura, or one of these coasters will um, be the top. So one, not like, not all of these will be like the top 15 best coasters in the chain, but the number one is the best coaster in the chain. So let's get right into it. So here are our contestants. Great America, we have Raging Bull. Great Adventure, we have El Toro. Great Escape, we have Comet. New England, we have Wicked Cyclone. Loran, we have Goliath. Darien Lake and America, we have the Ride of Steel clones. Uh, Mexico, we have Superman at Ultima Escape. Uh, Magic, Mount Magic Mountain, we have Twisted Colossus. Over Texas, we have New Tex Texas Giant. Fiesta, Texas, we have Iron L Rattler. Over Georgia, we have Goliath. Uh, St. Louis, we have the Boss. Frontier City, we have Silver Bullet. And Discovery Kingdom, we have the Joker. So, coming in at number 15 is Silver Bullet at Frontier City. Um, This is basically a small source. It's got looping so it's got a It's got a loop and basically kind of like a few hills and a few turns. Like, kind of has like a figure eight. And it has a tunnel at the end of the ride, which is good. But, uh, other than that, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's not like... Even though it is the park's best ride, it, I mean, it's still, like, it's just okay. Like, you know, it's not tall. It's not that tall. It's not that long. It's not that fast. So, yeah. Now, number 14 is the boss at Six Flags St. Louis. Um, it was made by CCI, and, uh, yeah. And it's got a good height and drop. It's got really good length. It's got a good speed, but the drop is a little, uh, uh not, a, it could have been a little bit steeper. It's a pretty long, drawn out one coaster. It has a good layout. Decent, not bad. The airtime is definitely existing on the coaster. Um, there's a bunch of hills on it, and especially in the drop and stuff. Um, unfortunately, the ride is rough. I mean, it is. It was made by CCI, so uh, and they're gone. And CCI has been has rough coasters. Um, and it can feel a little bit slow at times. Like it is drawn out. I mean, those hills are like very long. Like they don't go up fast. Like they're kind of like gradual. So I mean, it can feel a little rock. Um, the ride isn't bad, but um. They should definitely RMC it. it. That would make it a top 25 coaster for many. I mean, it has it has so much potential being a train coaster and all, but it would be so much better if it was like you know, an RMC hybrid. The number 13 is Superman Ride at Steel at Six Flags America. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's meant to be a speed coaster. It's got a few hills and helixes throughout, but uh, it ranks it. This ranks so low because it's like the straight track. I mean, it, this is one of the most boring parts of any roller coaster. You lose speed. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not bad. I mean, it's got a great length. It's got a. You know, it is a hyper coaster and it goes fast. It has a decent drop. But I mean, the fact that like it's just okay. It's a speed coaster. It's, like this is one of Intamin's like early hype earlier hyper coasters. I mean, like yeah, yeah. Now number twelve is the uh, ride of steel at Darien Lake. Um, it's the same ride basically, but it's a mirrored version of it. Um, and the only reason this is better is because well, there's actually like two reasons. The first one is that the like half the coaster is actually over water. Like the stray track, it doesn't feel as boring because it's over like a lake basically, and you know it looks more scenic. Also, the park basically relies on this more than uh, Six Flags America does for being the top coaster because. This one you'll see for, you know, for, for miles and miles, but, you know, like, a park like Six Flags America ha also has coasters like Joker's Jinx and Light Hawk or Batman, so, yeah. But the stats are, like, the stats are the same as the other one. Now, number 11 is the Comet Grayscape. Um, it's a fun ride. It was built a long time ago, basically, like, 70 years ago, but it's still pretty smooth. I mean, it was some retrack. It has a lot of air time. Um, the hit... Unfortunately, with the airtime, if you're in the front half of the train, you can barely feel it. And I know that's the case with some coasters, but at least you get, like, some pops. Yeah, it's not that great in the front. Um, but the back, in the very back, it's a little rough. Um, the layout is good with a bunch of hills, and it's got a great double down. And a good ending, but it is a double out and back coaster, so it is kind of like a, like a standard layout, I guess. Um, 
I love this ride. It's my first coaster, really. But uh, I think I feel like a newer GCI with like would be definitely better. Kind of like something like a I don't know Ghost Rider. Yeah. Um, and the stats. I mean, it's kind of long, yeah, but I don't know. It, the drops not the steepest or anything. So yeah. Now, number ten is Goliath Alaron. Um, and I really think it's funny how a park like it's funny how this is like a hyper coaster, except it's not tall enough to be a hyper coaster. Um, it's an out back coaster. It's designed like a hyper, but it, I mean it is short of it by like twenty six feet, which kind of sucks. Um, the ride has some airtime hills, you know, like B and M type, and uh, one hundred eighty degree turn, which is a turn around, which is okay. And it doesn't really have that much gels to it. Um, and basically the only reason it's ranked higher than common is because the airtime is like more existent throughout the ride and you know being a airtime is legendary but it's got a decent drop and uh, good speed good length now number nine is the joker at six flags discovery kingdom i just love saying the joker uh this is considered to be one of the weaker rmc's which is true uh it's still a good ride um the drop is pretty good and there's a few bank turns and hills <coughs> so it has some good hang time on those inversions um, I feel like that's really it. I mean, the theming is kind of like Six Flags, you know, so not great. I mean, and it could have used a land a little more last hit. I mean, <clears throat> there are still those gaps in between, which I know all RMCs have, most RMCs have, but I feel like they, if they add a little more height to that lift hill, they could have gotten an extra few hundred feet in. <clears throat> it is very smooth, though. Um, the stats, it is pretty short. It's not the tallest RMC. It's not the fastest RMC, but it's got a good drop, like angle of descent. The number eight is Superman at Ultimo Escape at Six Flags in Mexico. Um, <clears throat> this is a unique hyper. It actually has kind of like a pre-lift section in the woods, which is, I kind of find pretty unique. Um, the ride is pretty full, and then it has, you know, after that chain lift, you got a bunch of air time, helixes, turns, you turn left and right, you know, twist. And even after, like, the mid-course break run, you still got some nice air time hills. And it's by far, it's probably the best coaster in the country, <clears throat> but it is a little rough. I mean, it was made by Morgan, and... I mean, they, you know, like, Steel Phantom's a little bit rough. And all, uh, the paint is getting, like, faded, too. I mean, and even, and, like, if you look in the first image, it, it basically goes, like, it's kind of, like, part of a parking lot. It's kind of a partial parking lot coaster, and it doesn't look great in that. So I feel like they could have fiend it a little better as well. But one of the longest, I think it's probably the longest coaster that Six Flags owns, one or one of the longest. Um, it's got a good height, good drop, all that. Good speed, too. The number seven is New Texas Giant at Over Texas. I mean, I feel like most manufacturers, they have, like, an okay start. Like, you know, like, a coaster, like, um, like, for B&M, they had Apocalypse, you know, that's okay. But, I mean, like, RMZ, they did great. I mean, it, it has a great first drop, you know, got a few decent airtime modes and large bank turns with this whole coaster. It's got good length, you know, it's got good drop, good angle descent, um, and it's good speed for a manufacturer's first ride. Um, it's one of the weaker arms. It has no inversions. I mean, it's kind of short for arm. It's about an average arm ceiling, but it's not the best by any means. Um, but it does have a unique layout, at least. So that is good. Um, the stats, it's kind of average for arm I guess. A little above average, I guess. Yeah. Now, number six is Raging Bull at Six Flags Great America. I was originally considering uh, Goliath, but my buddy here, my butter, my buddy Tanner here helped me out with this, so thanks. Um, it's one of the oldest B&M hypers. It has a cool twister whale. It's full of airtime helixes. A few good near miss elements. Um, I feel like if Goliath, I feel like this is what Giovanola was trying to go at <laughs> at Magic Mountain, because it, they kind of similar like the layouts, or not layouts, but yeah, I guess they do. Not even layouts, but they have similar elements and stuff. Um, so I feel like that's what it should have been. It's definitely under rank, but it's not the smoothest of the b &M Hypers. The only reason it ranked Goliath better than Goliath is because it has a, a much longer length and a few more near-miss elements and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, stats are good. Now, number five is the, another go is Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia. Um, this is one of the greatest being hypers out there. It's got a great length, full of airs, huh? One of the best helixes in the world in this, um, you can see in a second image. And, I mean, that just looks insane. Um, the drop would be better if it was slightly steeper. It's not too steep. Um, but the layout is pretty unique. Um, it's got kind of like a box layout compared to, like, an out and back or a twister. And, uh, also, the, other, the only other thing, it, it's getting a little bit rough. And, so, yeah, it's got that being a rattle. 
stats are good. It's about 5,000. Er, it's like 4,500 feet. It's got a good height, but it drops in. Eh, okay. And number four is Twisted Colossus. It's at Magic Mountain. Um, it's a good coaster. It, originally, it was a good coaster, but it was losing its popularity. So they made it something else, and now it's even better. Um, dueling side by side with another train is like super, it's pretty cool. And you get to go around twice because it's a Mobius loop coaster. Um, unfortunately, now the inversions are also good as well. I mean, basically, when you're if you are in a duel, like seeing the other people like below or above you is really cool. Um, unfortunately, the dueling aspect of the coaster doesn't work that well. Um, it's okay, and uh, the, and going up those lift hills can be pretty slow at times. Um, so yeah, but. Luckily, with West Coast Racers, they fixed that, but it wasn't fixed for this, so that kind of uh, isn't the great best. Um, it's kind of standard for RMC. It's pretty long, but uh, it's, the speed for a coaster like this is okay, but it's got a great drop. The number three is Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Um, this is probably one of the most unique RMCs. It has a bunch of tunnels, it goes through the quarry wall, and it goes on top of it, and dives on and off of it, I think that's pretty cool. It's got air time, you know. The inversion is cool as you're like diving back, or jumping back onto the wall, I mean, that is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Because you're kinda like, you know, you kinda, it's a good way to get you pumped up for that second half. Um, unfortunately the ride is kinda short, it'd be better if it featured another inversion, like, you know, when you dive back off the quarry wall, you still have some speed coming off, so, kinda sucks that just goes in that break run. And number two is Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. Um, it's, this is one of the best RMCs. The first drop, bank turn, the, followed by the inversion, the double down, is a great way to start the ride. Um, yeah, that's basically what it puts it up there so quickly. And then, you know, your second loop or cycle is pretty good. And then even your third one, even though it slows down a bit, that final inversion is great. You know, that zero G rule i think or install at all um unfortunately like i said the third the third lap it needs better pacing i mean you can't really fix that unless you feel like made it slightly taller but like you know it's still a great ride otherwise um the stats are okay it's not the tallest it's not the longest it's not the fastest and it's not in it but it's got a good angle descent so it's okay now number one is El Toro at Great Adventure. I mean, I feel like this one was kind of expected. What's not to love about it? It's fast, has a great layout, it has a bunch of air time. It's tall, long, and has a steep drop for a wooden coaster. Um, the theming is above average for Six Flags, and it's really smooth. Um, the pacing is also strong, and you'll never feel bored on this. Um, it's by far one of the best coasters in the world, and one of the best wooden coasters out there. And uh, it is definitely the best Six Flags coaster. So. Uh, yeah, and the stats are great too. It's 180 feet, which is one of the tallest wind coasters out there. It's pretty long, it's got a great speed, and it's got a great angle of descent. So anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I'll check out some of my other videos, and I will see you all next time. Bye.